Hello, my name is Thiago Pereira and I will present the work I did with Telj Campus entitled Learn by Guessing, Multi-Step Pseudo Label Refinement for Person Reidentification. Uh, first, let's define what is person reidentification. It's basically an image retrieval task where the object in the image are people. Therefore, our objective here is given a query image and a gallery of images from uh, other people, a lot of people that pass through our cameras. We want to know which images from our gallery is the same person as the person that is in our carry image. So basically we want to retrieve every image from the gallery that have the same subject as the subject in our query. Uh, a, a really big really big problem that we have in the personal identification is that the addition of a new camera, a new viewpoint or a new set of cameras or the application of the algorithm in another place with other illumination conditions and all these variations that we may have in these uh, camera sets we will have a direct impact in the algorithm performance and this can be a roadblock for the best real world applications. So in our work we want to propose a method that allow us to adapt our algorithm for these new camera viewpoints in, without the need of a human labeling because the human annotation is too expensive uh, it takes time and people to do it, so we want to label these images in an unsupervised manner and perform the new training to adapt to our algorithm in this new data set, in this new group of cameras without the need of human work. Um, a little bit about the background. A lot of times we saw the person identification being approached as a classification learning and that's interesting because uh, as uh, almost all uh, classification learning losses try to divide the octopus space in the n classes with uh, a good entropy between them it can really uh, give you good boundaries between these classes but for the person reidentification challenge we have disjoint sets fr uh, when comparing the training set and the testing set so there is no subject that is in training set and also in the testing set so we cannot create a class namely I don't know Tiago where I will always identify Tiago if I were trying to do this for everyone in the world I would have, I would have billions of classes and that's unfeasible. So here we choose to uh, approach the problem as a metric learning problem. Therefore our objective here is to extract a feature from the image and features from two, ima two, two, two images from the same person will have features that are nearby in our output vector space while your features from different people will be uh, further away in our output vector space. But create in the metric learning problem, we have to create batches where we have some features from the same people and features from different people that we will compare and approximate the features from the same and uh, split the features from uh, different people. And in a big data set with millions of images and thousands of pairs subjects we would have trouble to perform all these comparisons therefore I couldn't compare Tiago with our, our other subjects in the data set so it's also important to use some kind of classification learning that can have so for every batch, for every image, I will have some influence from all other classes in the data set to really uh, have a good output vector space. 
for the model architecture, uh, as we uh, our challenge requires a neural network that's capable of extracting a feature from the subject in the image. So we want to disregard camera variations and background noise. Therefore, any architecture designed for image classification would be good for us. We choose to use the ResNet 50, and they are a good uh, start point. We also use the IBM version of the ResNet 50 because the instance normalization blocks help us to reduce the influence, the influence of the illumination in the image so we can achieve a better generalization in our network and achieve better results. Uh, for our train loss, we choose to use the triplet loss. This loss is what guides us to the metric learning task. Uh, for each batch, it is pushing, pushing away features from different people and pulling together in, uh, features from the same people. And to, to choose which feature I will pull near and push away, we use the batch hard approach where we are always working with the worst case scenario. And as uh, Hermes et al. proved in his work, we, uh, this, we were, with this technique, we can achieve the best results. For data sets, we chose to use the Market 1501 dataset and the Duke MTMC dataset. They are a good pair of datasets to use in this domain adaptation scenario because both were, have uh, sort of the same amount of images and identities, cameras, and also they both are from uh, an outdoor scene. So they have a a similar composition and that's good to analyze our results. Uh, so here for our methodology, first of all we uh, have our network and train it in a fully supervised manner in a source domain. The source domain may be the market and then we would adapt it to Duck or we can use Duck as source and market as target and the adaptation would be otherwise. So our first step is to do this fully supervised training. We start with an IBM NET58 trained in the ImageNet. We use the add-on optimizer. Our loss function have three factors. The triplet loss with batch hard factor, that is our metric learning factor. We also use a label smooth cross entropy to give for all of the bets in the training this information from all the classes in the data set. So the classification learning help us a little bit here. And we also use the center loss that works here just like in regularization for sparse clusters. We want that our output vector space is compact for our all our classes and the center loss help us with it. So we train it for nine epochs and we use it the following learn rate scheduler here. The second step is to apply the domain adaptation and to do that we do in a progressive learning manner. So first of all we trained the model in the source domain, then we use this model in the, all the images from the target domain to extract every features, the features for each image. And now we have an output vector space and a bunch of features from the target domain that we don't know who belongs to, to each image. So we need to cluster these images to create cl uh, classes and labels for this target domain. For that, we use a clustering algorithms and we assume that all the clusters are correct and each cluster represents a subject. So this way we create this pseudo labels data set. And once we have this episode labels data set, we fine tune the model trained in the source domain in this new data set. And then we generate new episode labels, do another round of fine tuning, and we do this recursively until full conver convergence of our methods. Uh, so as we saw before, in the progressive learning, we need the cl uh, some cluster technique to cluster our features. So which clustering technique to use is important here. We started our experiments with the k-means clustering, but k-means clustering have a problem that we have to 
choose a K and there is no good way to choose a K so we have to guess it and the K means uh, use all the features that are available there inside a cluster so a feature that may be used may be considered as outlier will be included in the cluster and because of this feature the cluster centroid may be uh, pushed away from uh, an interesting direction and this is not very interesting it would be uh, more interesting for us to have an outlier detector and leave these uh, outlier features for another steps of our progressive learning and just work with the features that we are sure f from which f from which subject it is so we propose to use the debayscan clustering because it has an uh, an outlier detector and with the debase scan we can have more compact clusters and we can leave hard samples from f for future steps and therefore in future steps we will have newer data that will help us to continue learning uh, through the progressive learning steps then uh, once we have the clusters generated by our clustering algorithm we do a little bit of uh, cleaning in the clusters because there are some heuristics that uh, point us to clusters that we are not interested to like clusters that have less than k samples because when I'm uh, creating a batch for the triplet loss I choose P subjects and K samples from each subject so if a subject don't have at least K samples it's not interesting for me because I wouldn't be able to use this cluster in our batch but, uh, in the, when I want to create the batch uh, another problem is clusters that have features uh, from the all the features are from the same camera because with all the features from the same camera we can't learn how a, a subject appear in two different cameras like which are the illumination changes, the pose variations and all of that so clusters where all the samples are from the same camera don't, don't help too much in the learning process so we also leave them out so the clusters that don't have these conditions are li leave out and the samples uh, should be used in the next steps from the progressive learning where they are easier for our model to predict from which subject it is. Uh, one problem that we realized is that the features were being clustered more by viewpoints than from the subject that is in the, in the image and that's because for new cameras each camera has its own characteristics and these characters were dominating the feature space to deal with that we grouped all the features from uh, each camera and uh, calculated the mean uh, the mean, uh, mean vector and a standard deviation vector for each camera then we normalized each feature with uh, with the information from which camera it was and this way we could align better our output vector space and reduce the influence of the camera viewpoint and have clusters that are more guided by the person subject than the camera viewpoint so our full pipeline is here we have a model pre-trained in the source domain and we have a lot of unlabeled target domain images we uh, do a feature extraction in all these images then we do the camera based normalization to align this output vector space then we do our clustering with outlier removal cluster selection and episode labels prediction then we fine tune our previously trained model in these episode labels and we do this recursively until we reach full convergence uh, finally as we can see in this table our results are excellent we pushed the state-of-the-art when using the market 1501 
through Dookie MTMC, the Dookie as the target. And we believe that our method is really strong when using Dookie MTMC as the target domain because Dookie have more cameras than market. So it have a higher variance and our camera guide normalization can reduce this variance and this camera viewpoint influence and generate better episode labels so we can achieve really good results. Also in the setup where we use Duke MTMC as source and market as target, we also reach the state of art and can prove that our method is very effective for every setup possible here. So some final observations is that even our uh, initial pseudo labels are noisy, the iterative process with the cluster selection, outlier removal, uh, allow us to keep improving the pseudo labels at each step and this uh, really help us to achieve very good results. The database scan with outlier detector is crucial because when the outliers are inside the pseudo labels we have uh, even noisier episode labels that doesn't help us and also the camera guided normalization is essential because the clustering by viewpoints is not interesting for us and we want to have example of a subject in different cameras so we can learn this translation that's all thank you